Hi guys, so if you've ever hankered after a more horrific version of Mary Poppins, I might just have the thing for you today, although I can't promise any dancing chimney sweeps or secret portals to animated alternate dimensions, unfortunately. <laughs> So before we get into it, the usual reminders that you'll find all my other Hammer reviews in my Hammer playlist, and there will be spoilers today, although I will at least refrain from telling you who the villain turns out to be, because this film hides that from you for the longest time. You would think it would be the nanny, wouldn't you? But not necessarily so. Maybe it's the nanny, maybe it isn't, but I will let you discover that for yourself. So this film concerns an upper middle class family from London. There are a couple of parents, Virginia and Bill, and at the start of this story, they are about to welcome home their young son, Joey, who's been staying in a mental institute for the past two years. And the reason why he's been there is because he was blamed for the death of his younger sister, who died in mysterious circumstances, which are, are withheld from us, the viewer. But Joey says that the nanny was responsible for the death. So straight away, we've got this mystery of who actually killed the little girl. Was it Joey or the nanny. Now writer Jimmy Sangster seems to signpost that it is one of those two people but that got me thinking that maybe it isn't. Maybe it was actually the mother Virginia because she is an absolute nervous wreck at the beginning of this. She's crying all the time. She's seemingly mentally unstable so I thought well maybe she's like that because she killed her daughter. And then I thought to myself, well, maybe it's the father simply because he seems to be the most normal person in this family. So maybe it's a case of the least obvious person is actually the person we're looking for. So it's not difficult to, to think that throughout the rest of this film, we will slowly build towards finally finding out the, uh, the, the cause of the girl's death and who was responsible and maybe a couple more people will, will drop dead before we're done as well. And if, if you think that, then you would be absolutely right to think that. Give yourself a pat on the back. This film was directed by a guy called Seth Holt, who did three Hammer films in total. So his first one was Taste of Fear, my all-time favourite of the uh, black and white Hammer thrillers. This was his second, and his third was Blood from the Mummy's Tomb, which I've not personally seen yet. But apparently Holt sadly died halfway through production of that film, so a sad end to his career. But by all accounts, he was a well-respected director, albeit not the most prominent in Hammer circles, although I guess it was kind of hard to wrestle the director's chair away from people like Terence Fisher and Freddie Francis if, if, if they wanted to do any particular Hammer project. In terms of actors, we've got Bette Davis in this, a massive star back in the day. I had absolutely heard of Bette Davis, even though I'd never seen her in anything before this. The fact that she's in this, it kind of makes me think of uh, Betsy Palmer being in Friday the 13th. Betsy Palmer, apparently a, a well-respected stage and film actress, and when she was in Friday the 13th, it kind of turned a few heads. And I, I, I feel like it was probably the case, that the same case here with Bette Davis being in this film. I'd certainly not heard of any of the other principal actors in this, although one of the actors who plays a really small role in this, he, he plays the, the head teacher at the beginning of the film, uh, a guy called Morris Denham. I, I saw him quite recently in another Hammer film, Hysteria, that I reviewed. He, he played the best part in that film, a kind of uh, a private detective type character. So to see him pop up in this, even for just a scene or two, really did sort of put a smile on my face. So I'll say at this juncture that this one didn't really do it for me, sadly. I mean, I was never bored throughout. I was sat patiently waiting for the outcome of the mystery. And there is some good drama in some of the scenes, but I didn't find the big reveals towards the end to be particularly satisfying or clever. And the person who turns out to be the villain is probably the last person I would have picked had I been personally writing the film. But I think an even bigger problem is the characters in this. They are not very likeable. With the exception of the nanny herself, she's an all right character. I, I kind of liked her, but all the other principal characters are really annoying, especially the young boy, Joey. I mean, this guy, he will get on your nerves very, very quickly in this. He's constantly accusing the nanny of having uh, killed the little girl, but, but it's over and over again in so many scenes. He's such a brat, uh, Joey. He reminds me of a girl from another Hammer film, um, another black and white thriller called The Snorkel that came out in the late 50s. For all I know, Jimmy Sangster wrote that one as well. It wouldn't surprise me. 
In that film, this girl was constantly accusing this one guy of having done a murder or something, but it was over and over again. She just never shut the hell up. Joey's exactly the same. It, it just gets really irritating after a while. The mother, Virginia, she's kind of annoying as well. And even Jimmy Sangster seems to realise this. He, he sort of benches this character halfway through, the, halfway through the film. Doesn't kill her off, just takes her out of the scenes. As for the father, he's kind of like a poor man's George Banks from Mary Poppins, if, if we're going to have another reference to that film. He's got the same kind of snooty, slightly camp... Uh, upper class London thing going on, but he, he's just, he, he's like a wet lettuce uh, of a character. He's, he's just not very good. So the fact that I didn't like most of the main characters in this was not really a cool thing, really. And when the big flashback finally came, I, I knew we would either be getting a flashback to explain the little girl's death, or it would be told in dialogue. And the rule of movie says that you should always show, don't tell. But I think this would have been a rare occasion where it would have been better to tell because showing this girl's death was kind of horrible, really. I, I didn't enjoy watching it. I mean, you don't see the grisly details, but you, you almost see them. And, and just the fact that you know this girl is dying in such tragic and very believable circumstances, I, I kind of felt like a, there was a dark cloud hanging over my head. I just, I just wasn't enjoying this flashback at all. And it's quite lengthy as well. It drags on for quite a period of time. So it just wasn't fun. And when I think of how uh, the, the, the core idea of this film came about, I can only think that Sangster sat there and thought, okay, girl dies in a bath and I'll build a thriller centered entirely around that yeah let's go with that but yeah maybe the core idea should have been based around something else in all honesty there are some positives i could list if if i tried hard enough so as i've already intimated the actual nanny character played by bet davis is pretty good um, and the performance there is strong there are also some good side characters so there's this 15 year old girl called bobby who for some reason makes friends with joey why would you do that especially if you're 15 she's all right she doesn't really feature into the story enough for me to call her one of the main characters but if she'd have been in another film something like quadrophenia say something like that i think she could have been pretty good in those circumstances she lives in an apartment above uh, where the main family lives and, and the two buildings are sort of connected by the two floors I should say connected by a, a weird fire escape system with a veranda and I thought that could have been quite a good setup in a different movie but it, it's not really required here which is a shame Bobby though is involved in the only moment of humor in the entire film when this row of uh, plant pots falls off and almost kills a postman down on the street but it's not that funny, and it's literally the only funny thing that I can remember in this. There's also a side character called Aunt Penn, who basically comes in to replace the Virginia character about halfway through. She, she, she comes in to do babysitting duties. Now, this character, in her first scene, it's written into the dialogue that uh, she has this heart condition where she can't get too overexcited or she might just drop down dead. So she's really got to manage this problem. But as soon as that's mentioned in the film, I thought, well, there's a reason why that's being mentioned. Later on, the, the villain's going to use it to their advantage and scare this person to death. And of course, that actually happens. So it's just a very clumsily signposted thing. If this character had been a big fat man in his early 60s, I probably wouldn't have thought anything of it. But because... Pen, Penelope, I think her full name is, because she's a young, slim, blonde woman in her 30s, I thought to myself, well, why would you go to great lengths to mention this heart condition in her first scene? Very early on in that scene, I think, she, she also mentions that she's determined to live till she's 90. That's her ambition, apparently. Um, now, as soon as she did this, I immediately had to go on Wikipedia to find out just how long the actual actress lived. She only lived till she was 58, so she got nowhere near 90. But it's a little bit sad that some of the side characters, I guess, are better than the main characters in this film. Overall, I'd have to say it was a slightly disappointing experience, but you might feel differently. This film does have a 91% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, so maybe I'm the exception to the rule. 
But if you are going to give it an hour and a half of your time, I would absolutely make it the undercard of your evening. You know, maybe watch it while you're having your dinner about upper seven, but the main film, the main attraction of the evening is still to come. You know, watch this and then watch something that's absolutely better, like The Curse of Frankenstein or something. So I'll quickly show you the version of the film that I've got for this. Here is my DVD copy of The Nanny. I wouldn't say that it's been remastered in any way, but neither does it contain an irritating amount of scratches or anything like that. It, it's, it's basically fine to watch. It's okay, you know. Um, in terms of features, there's a commentary track by uh, Jimmy Sankster himself, actually, which, which could be quite interesting. And I think it would be beneficial for me personally to watch the commentary track and listen to Sankster explain some of his artistic choices for this film. If I, if I did that, I might appreciate this a lot more but it's just a case of do I have the motivation to spend another hour and a half on this film given that I didn't massively enjoy it but the commentary track is there if you're interested but for now uh, as far as this review is concerned it's time to get to the bag of terror and find out what sort of score I'm going to give the movie let's see what we've got so we've got one Two bloody axes out of five. That is all I can bring myself to give for this, I'm afraid. It's not the worst Hammer film of all time, but it's it's down there in the lower regions. And I have to say, I, I can't see myself watching this one again, personally. Right, that's it for today. I'll be back soon with another Hammer review. Until next time, I will leave you with this pearl of wisdom. Think very carefully before hiring a nanny. Okay, goodbye.